This should be a fun one. Here we have a Brady Snare. Now this thing is in pretty rough shape. There's like rust here and there. The throw-off has been replaced with this Yamaha. The washers on the lugs are completely rotten and destroyed. The bearing edges and snare beds have been recut by this Nodar Road fellow. The snares are destroyed. Both the batter and resonant head are shot. Also, there are paint chips that have been filled with wood filler, a bent tension rod, the lug mounting holes are a bit wallered out, and the screw on the strainer is stripped. I think that's all. Not that bad if you think about it, but the biggest thing is this giant crack. But considering the price that I paid for this thing, it should be worth it to try and fix it. This was found at a local thrift store for $10. $10 for a Brady snare. That is insane. And now, actually, I didn't find this. My buddy who uh, buys and sells stuff for a living, he found it and hit me up. was like, yo, dude, I got this snare if you're interested. And I was ready to pay top dollar for it. But after seeing the crack, I offered him 20 bucks and he took it. So now I have to fix it or at least try. These lug gaskets are made from rubber and rubber dry rot, so imagine an old crusty rubber band, that's basically what these are now. This is a plastic razor blade, and my god, these things are so handy to have around, but I'm using it to scrape away what's left of the rubber. That is disgusting. Now for the crack. I'm starting by cutting this block of wood to match the profile of the drum, so this along with the clamps is what I'll use to squeeze it back together. To get the glue on the inside of the crack, I'm using this precision applicator, and I'm really squeezing a bunch of glue in there, and you'll see that it's, you know, pushing out of the crack, which is what I want. I want a lot of glue, and want to make sure that there's plenty on the inside of the crack. Then I'll just apply the clamping blocks along with some clamps and also I'm using a towel and it's just there to kind of even out the pressure. I don't want to, you know, force the drum into some weird shape so the towel kind of takes up some of the pressure and evens it out a little bit. Uh, but after the next day I took off the, uh, the clamps and sure enough the crack didn't fully bond. So no big deal, I just squirted in a bunch more glue and used a single clamp this time because it wasn't as big and uh, it worked. I decided I'm going to replace the air vent so I took the old one out and I was tired of looking at the sharpie so goodbye Mr. Road. I started to sand the inside of the shell, and my thought is to maybe repaint this drum down the road and really bring it back to life, but just considering the condition of it right now, I'm really not that worried about how it looks at this point, but it kind of looks cool after I sand it through a bunch of the layers of paint. It almost reminds me of that funky sonar finish. But on the outside of the shell, I didn't want to go too crazy with it, so I just used some high grit sandpaper and car polish to help bring back some of the shine. Okay, so that just happened. I peeled the tape off of the badge and I took the label off with it. And the worst part is I wasn't even filming. Ugh. This is the drawer of shame. And it just got its first sticker. This is where uh, failed projects and things go to die. Remember when I tried to use this thing? Shifting over to the hardware, I removed what was left of the gaskets and used some goof off and q-tips to clean off the grind. To remove the strip screw on the strainer, all I did was cut a slot in the head of it with a hacksaw and then use a slotted screwdriver to remove it. Oldest trick in the book. 
these were the only screws I had that were the right size, but they were a bit long, so I just cut them down with a hacksaw, and also I replaced the ones on the throw-off so they would all match. The snare side rim isn't that bad, so I just used soapy water and aluminum foil to clean it up. The batter side head was a bit worse, but I did the same thing and just rubbed them with some oil once I was done to help prohibit the rust from forming again. For the gaskets, I thought it would look cool to use some green felt, so these are leather hole punching tools, so I cut out some bigger discs that match the size of the lug, and then I punched a smaller hole for the mounting screw. And after a bunch of hammering and screwing up a bunch of them, I finally had 20 gaskets. I was really trying to avoid doing anything major to this drum, but for the air vent, I did have to drill out the hole a little bit bigger, so no big deal. I of course also cut out gaskets for the throw off and strainer. Also in this shot, you can really see how massive these snare beds are. For the tension rods, I replaced the metal washers with black plastic ones, and this time I didn't forget to add white lithium grease. At this point, I totally gave up on my playing because I heard something and knew exactly what it was. One of the lug screws came undone and was rattling around. Typically, if this was to happen, I will just stop and fix it, but this drum was so hard to tune. I'm honestly not a big fan of sharp bearing edges and also the massive snare beds didn't help so I actually had to reach out to the dudes over at Sounds Like a Drum to give me some pointers on tuning this thing. Uh, they totally helped out so definitely check them out. But still, this thing was so hard to tune and so hard to get sounding good. So the last thing I want to do is take the head off and have to retune it. So to end this saga, the crack is repaired. The snare sounds pretty good if you ask me. But at some point down the road, I need to take it apart. I just don't want to do it right now. So I'll leave you with this super repetitive Tom Groove I thought would help cover up the rattling. So hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching. <laughs>